Today I want to talk to you about the myth that eating healthy has to be so much uh, more expensive. Um, I've heard people say, well, it's just so more expensive to eat healthy um, and those kind of things. And so in today's video, I just want to address that, kind of show some numbers on, um, yeah, some things may be a little bit more expensive but not by much. And I want to kind of prove that point by showing you guys some figures that I have come up with. And then also um, I wanted to kind of do a compare and contrast of um, unhealthy foods. Uh, and I don't have a lot of them, but just a few examples of unhealthy foods versus um, a healthy alternative. And then at the end, if you stay, you will get a few tips from me on how to save money whenever you are uh, trying to, um, you know, watch the money uh, and kind of some things that have helped me personally uh, be able to afford to eat healthier. First of all, I want to talk about the, the food that sparked uh, the making of this particular video, which was my homemade greens. I recently started making homemade greens because um, I was buying these uh, Glory brand uh, mixed greens in a can and I realized that there was some ingredients in it that I didn't really want to be eating. And so I thought, you know, how hard can it be to make my own greens? So I chose to try it out. I thought it couldn't hurt to try. Um, so that was what sparked this video is, uh, just making my own from scratch and making it just a little bit healthier. Um, because if you looked at canned foods and canned foods is one of the, the main things that I was thinking about when I was thinking about making this video is, you know, there's preservatives and different things in the canned foods that maybe we isn't as healthy as, um, we would like. And so... Uh, that was kind of one of the kickers is, is it really way more expensive to buy fresh whole foods and um, utilize them in a variety of different ways uh, versus buying just like canned goods? Um, so that's the, where we're going to start. We're going to start with the Glory brand uh, greens. And they was a 27 ounce can for about $1.44 or five uh, cents per ounce. And I can make my own using um, spinach greens, uh, spinach, mustard, turnip, and onion. And I just cook that in a big pot uh, with, uh, so I saute the, on the onions in either oil or butter, depending on what you like better. Um, and then I add in the greens with some water and then just a little bit of smoked uh, flavoring and then um, some apple cider vinegar uh, and a little maple syrup as well to give it that sweetness that you're gonna be looking for in greens. And I just boil that down for quite a while and it makes a whole lot. So instead of the 27 ounces, it's actually gonna make around 160 ounces. Now it's not gonna be quite that much, but it's around that. Um, and the way I got that figure is we uh, use certain cans, uh, we reutilize cans, and I put it in there um, from our bulked pickles and uh, bulk um, green, uh, those little green peppers that are really good. They're like vinegary. Uh, they're really delicious. Um, so we reutilize that, and that's how I got that ounce account. And it's about uh, six cents per ounce for the homemade greens. So you're you're actually going to be spending one cent extra per ounce uh, for the homemade greens, which is hardly anything if you think about um, all the goodness that you're putting into that. And that you can really regulate the flavors. You can regulate um, what you're putting, how much salt you're putting in, how much, uh, of everything you're putting in. So you can make it lower sodium if you need a lower sodium diet and those kind of things. Um, which is another reason that I had started trying to make, uh, the greens from scratch because I was trying to do a lower sodium, uh, diet, uh, for just a little while to see if it was going to help, uh, with some problems I was having. And it did. So we're going to continue to make our greens, uh, from scratch or from the wholer foods uh, 
uh, in that way. One thing I'd like to know is I use the websites uh, simplygrocerydeal.com to get my all these prices and then I use the Walmart app to get my Walmart prices. I just use the my store feature. And so if you see me throwing stuff up with the prices, you can kind of understand uh, where I pulled those from and where they came from. With my homemade greens, um, I thought I would tell you the prices really quick. For the spinach, it's about $2.78. For the mustard greens, it's about $2.54. Turnip greens, it's about $4.34. Um, and the onions, if if I take the amount, which is $1.89, and divide that about by five, because there's usually about five in a bag, um, it's about $0.38 cents, um, per onion, which gives you a total of $10.04. Uh, for the entire um, amount of greens that I make. Um, and that's how I got the figure of six cents per ounce. <laughs> now, if you're like, well, that's a crazy amount of greens and there's no possible way I would eat that many greens, that's okay. You don't have to make that amount of greens. That's just an example. And I'm eating um, a large quantities of greens like that at, you know, at this time. But what you could do instead of uh, making it all into greens is you can make a mixed salad with um, part of the greens. So mix the uh, mustard greens, spinach greens, uh, and the turnip greens and just kind of toss them together and make that your salad, like your salad, like uh, your leafy greens for your salad. And then also you could make the greens, uh, boiled greens with all the yummy stuff in it um, as well. So you'd have greens on two different levels um, and it would save you quite a bit of money. When I was thinking about uh, canned vegetables, I just wanted to do another comparison of a canned vegetable. So I pulled up uh, green beans. I like to get fresh green beans uh, from the produce section and utilize them in dishes or just boil them or what have you. They taste better, better texture, all in my opinion. Um, and so I looked at them, and for a 14.5 uh, ounce can of the Great Value brand, so kind of the, the, the lowest I could find was 50 cents for that can, or 3 uh, cents per ounce. And then if you get one pound uh, bag of the fresh um, green beans from the produce section, it's about 15 Point nine ounces, um, you're looking at about $1.68 or 11 cents per ounce. So there is a little bit of a, a price hike there, but like I said, it's so worth it for the texture and um, for the flavor. You get just a better flavor and I know it's way healthier. It tastes way healthier um, to get the fresh green beans. Another thing, I didn't price this, but another thing I like to buy all these is they have frozen green beans and that is a great alternative too. If you're worried that you're not going to be able to eat green beans or any vegetables really um, in time, there's options like the green beans, they're really good to freeze um, and utilize that kind of thing. Um, so always think about what can I freeze? What can't I freeze uh, when you're looking at vegetables, especially if they're on sale because um, that makes a big difference for me. If something's on sale, I will definitely buy it and buy extra usually and try to freeze it. Um, one example of that would be uh, our collard greens. Uh, I got them on a great deal. Um, I got them on sale for $2.03 and I froze them for smoothies or you can use them, um, pull them out and make your greens um, with the frozen greens um, if you're not going to be able to utilize the that amount of greens uh, in a week or so or a week and a half or so. So that's an option too. If you find something on sale uh, that can be frozen, freeze it and uh, that'll save you money in the long run. So there's kind of one of my tips ahead of, of schedule for you. Um, so I actually saved $2.31 on those collard greens that I found on sale and we use those collard greens in our smoothie um, just as our green additive into all the fruits. Something else that people consider a more of a healthy food for breakfast would be like an instant oatmeal. 
Um, instant oatmeal are great and I used to eat a lot of them. Um, but they have a lot of added sugar and that kind of thing that, you know, I try to avoid now that I'm older. And so I looked at instant oatmeal and for a box of, of instant oatmeal, you could get that for $2 and 98 cents. And so that's about 12 cents per ounce. Um, but if you go ahead and you buy the quick oats, um, in a 42 ounce container for $2 and 46 cents, then uh, that's about six cents. That's about six cents um, per ounce. And of course, I don't expect you to eat them plain just by themselves because that's not like instant and it wouldn't be very sweet or delicious. So my alternative for that would be to buy uh, dried cranberries or something like that or a banana. And so for dried cranberries, um, for a bag, a 24 ounce bag, it's about $4 and 94 cents. And so that's about 21 cents per ounce. Um, and for one ounce, it's actually a fourth of a cup of the dried cranberries. So for every half a cup of serving, because that's what the instant, um, oatmeal is, uh, the serving wise is a half a cup. So I did the same thing with the oats. So a half a cup of serving of oats, you put a fourth a cup of your cranberries and, um, or you could, uh, to get that sweetness that you're going to be looking for, you could use a banana and bananas are only 18 cents, um, per banana roughly. Um, and you could add in things like cinnamon or nutmeg or whatever seasonings really that you like. Um, into your oatmeal to make it unique. Uh, sometimes we add like peanut butter and that kind of thing. Um, it's really whatever you feel like you would like. So yeah, the oatmeal isn't going to be like a huge money saver, but the point is that it's not going to break the bank either. So you're not going to be paying a fortune for oatmeal uh, that is a uh, going to be better for you in the long run. You're going to be getting um, more fiber if you add in like berries and that kind of thing or the dried fruit. You're going to be getting more nutrients than just sugar laden uh, oats. So I hope that you consider the the health value of that little extra cost. Um, not that it's that much of an extra cost. So if I could tell you one thing that has saved us a lot of money this would be that one thing and it's making refried beans uh, from scratch. So a can of refried beans, a 31 ounce can of refried beans is about $1.47, which isn't that expensive, right? Um, it's about five cents per ounce. Well, that's about seven servings. Um, so it's about 21 cents per serving. And if you take and you make your own. So how you make refried beans is super easy. You just um, get pinto beans and you cook them. And I use my power cooker to cook them with some salt or whatever you want to add in. Um, sometimes you just leave them plain and you can season them up later, whatever you want to do. Um, I get an eight pound bag of pinto beans for about $5.98 or that's about six cents per serving. Um, so you can see the big savings there. To me, that's a big savings and it's, uh, tailored to, to, um, the amount of sodium you, you need. Um, you can flavor it, um, to actually use it like a dip and that kind of thing. So this is, goes for all beans in general. I would buy them dried and uh, cook them up and keep them in your fridge. So we do like black beans. We buy them. And I'll cook up a whole uh, batch of, of them, put some in the fridge for like putting on salads or um, throwing in a stir fry or whatever might be the case. Or I also will take those black beans and puree them up and make black bean burgers. And I have a video up uh, that has our black bean burger um, recipe, I think, um, and that kind of thing. So that's definitely an option. Um, you can always... Uh, buy your rice uh, like that too. Obviously rice is cheaper. Uh, buy that in bulk. Get the, the biggest bag you can. That kind of thing. And it will actually save you in the long run. Something else I wanted to mention is carrots. 
Now, carrots, you can buy them in canned form. You can buy them pre-shredded. You can buy them as baby carrots. You can buy them as big carrots. My suggestion would be to buy the five pound bag of carrots. Um, the five pound bag of carrots is about 30, uh, 30, three dollars and 44 cents, um, or that's about 69 cents per pound. Um, stay away from the two pound bag because you're actually going to be paying more and, um, you can get the pound bag, but again, you, why not get the five pound bag? Um, you can utilize carrots in a lot of different ways, stir fries, you can boil them, uh, you can eat them as a snack with some of those refried beans that you're going to make or some black bean dip that you're going to make from your black beans. Um, so you can really utilize carrots in a lot of different ways. They're really tasty. Um, you can roast carrots, you can do all kinds of stuff. So I recommend getting the five pound bag um, of carrots because you're going to pay for convenience. So the baby carrots are uh, for two pound bag is $1.92 um, or that's about 96 cents per pound. So you're looking at uh, 69 cents per pound or 96 cents per pound. Um, so you're paying for convenience. And it doesn't take that long to cut up some carrots um, and have them in the fridge ready for, you know, your toddler or for just yourself um, if you're wanting to use it in like a dip or something like that. And then um, buying pre-cut or pre-shredded veggies are always going to cost like a fortune, um, in my opinion. 10 ounce bag of shredded carrots, for example, would be $1.88. So that would be a big uh, tip for, for you. Always make sure that you're not buying the convenience foods that are healthy foods. So, so you can buy vegetables that are pre-cut and that kind of stuff, but I do not recommend that um, because you're always going to pay a lot more for that convenience. So I told you that I wanted to kind of compare and contrast some things, and I don't have a lot of these to do. Um, based the, the main one that I wanted to focus on, and maybe I'll just do this one uh, just for sake of time, is uh, chips like Doritos, for example, at $3.98, um, you are going to only be able to, for one serving, have around 11 chips and that's a calorie count is 140 calories for those 11 chips and I don't know about you but whenever I sit down to eat Doritos <laughs> I eat more than 11 chips and so um, if you're comparing that which is a very unhealthy food um, I think most people would agree uh, and then you look at something as an alternative to that that you could still get that kind of crunch factor um, you could season it up up and get flavors uh, to go on to popcorn. So back whenever I lost all my weight before I got uh, all this life stuff thrown at me and got super stressed out, I was eating so much popcorn. <laughs> um, when I lost all my weight before, and you guys, if you've been around my channel any amount of time, know that I had a significant weight loss um, a few years ago, a couple years ago, I can't remember now. Um, and popcorn was on the menu every night for a snack. And if you look at popcorn, I just took um, this popcorn here, for example. It's the yellow popping corn. And it was $4.98. Um, and for each serving, you get seven and a half cups. Now, <laughs> if you look at... 11 chips and compare that to seven and a half cups um, you're going to realize that you're going to get full and that's going to fill you up um, you're not probably going to want to eat seven and a half cups of popcorn I know I don't um, so it's it's going to fill you up it's going to it's going to have that fiber that you need and that kind of thing and the, the calories for um, that that big serving is only 35 calories um, and that's if you pop it in oil if you don't pop it in oil and you like air pop it then you're looking at 30 calories so um, huge uh, a savings as far as money goes but also as far as calories go and really if you're looking at your health um, and which one would be healthier 
the popcorn to be a lot healthier for you. Um, so that was just kind of something I wanted to show you if you hadn't thought about an alternative to some of your um, least, uh, less healthy foods, that there are options uh, that you can t to kind of replace um, some of those foods that are really high cal um, and that are really full of preserv preservatives and uh, that kind of thing. Let's talk about sides for a second. So I know that when you're making a, a meal, a nice meal, you want to have a side with your main dish. So um, you could choose something like macaroni and cheese, which um, would be like $5.72 uh, for this particular macaroni and cheese that I found and uh, that I probably would have bought a long time ago. Um, and it's about 370 uh, calories per serving which I thought was crazy. It's only a one cup serving. But if you would would take that and instead of having the macaroni and cheese, uh, use the side of salad. And so you could have just a tossed salad um, for relatively cheap and have more of it for way less calories. Um, and not just calories, but I'm looking at uh, the nutrients that you would get out of macaroni and cheese <laughs> versus uh, salad. So 15 calories for two cups of salad uh, is way better than the 370 calories for one cup of macaroni and cheese. Uh, uh, you get your fiber uh, from the salad and I just did some tomatoes and uh, did onion from the leftover onion we'd have from you know cooking the greens and that kind of thing and with all that, it's only going to be 64 cents uh, for a serving of just a simple salad. Um, and of course, you can doctor that up and make it whatever you want it to be. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot cheaper. And like I said, the nutrients you're going to be gaining from that um, really is the kicker. So I wanted to mention really quick um, some tips on how I go about saving some money. The first tip would be to uh, find an app or look at ads. Um, so I have an app on my phone called Flip and it shows me all the local ads in my area. And for example, I looked up my local Aldi's on Flip and for vegetables of or vegetables and fruits of the week, um, we had things like green beans at $1.99 per pound, spinach for $90. Uh, 99 cents for an 8 ounce pack, strawberries at 99 cents for a pound, and grapes at 79 cents for a pound as well. So uh, utilize apps um, that will give you local ads so you can kind of base your meal planning and that kind of thing around sales or you can get great deals and freeze things or um, stock up on things and that kind of stuff. Another thing I suggest is buy in bulk when possible. Most likely the best deal is going to be in bulk. So like I talked about the carrots and how you want to get that five pound bag, these are going to be saving money in the long run and you just can make uh, so many things with that and utilize it in so many different ways. Um, do that with everything, not just your, your uh, vegetables and that kind of thing, but seasonings. Um, so for example, uh, or spices, seasonings and spices. So for example, turmeric, we go to a local health food store. Um, it's actually about 35 uh, to 40 minutes away and we buy in bulk so we don't have to go very often. Um, turmeric, and it costs quite a bit up front, but we don't have to buy it for a really long time. If you spread the uh, money out, we actually save money in the long run. So buy in bulk, uh, seasonings and spices and that kind of thing and you will save money um, another thing is flour we buy in bulk our flour because we make homemade uh, pancakes instant pancakes that kind of thing waffles um, I think I have a video on that if I don't you'll have to let me know and maybe I can make one pretty sure I do though um, so it's good to have bulk items like that and we just store them in plastic containers that I have uh, reused from uh, eating or having uh, snacks and that kind of thing for uh, my Sunday school class. I just kept the containers, cleaned them, and reutilized them. Um, also like pickles and peppers. 
you can buy in big bulk jars usually and I uh, reuse those jars as well for food storage so you can reutilize um, your jars but you can also buy it in bulk and save quite a bit of money in the long run if you look um, over time then uh, then you're gonna be saving over time which is really important so a few tips for um, eating healthier and staying on track with eating healthier would be meal planning. And I know that meal planning is not always the easiest thing to do. I am guilty of wanting to make a meal plan and not. Um, but whenever I do make meal plans, I always eat healthier. Um, I always save money. That is the big one right there. Um, save money, eat healthier, and have a plan of action. Because I know a lot of times, and I, I'm sure there's other people out there, that you want to eat healthier, but then it comes crunch time and you're like, I just need food now. Um, and so you wind up, you know, ordering something in or cooking something that's a little less healthy because it's faster. Um, so that brings me to my second tip is to uh, meal prep or not not necessarily meal prep, but to prepare food for meals. So you don't have to necessarily uh, meal prep, but if you prepare food that you can make for meals, such as the greens, or have the refried beans, or have the black beans already cooked up for the week, um, have the vegetables already pre-cut that you've brought home from the store, don't just put them in the fridge. Go ahead and cut them up and then put them in the fridge so that they're ready for the week ahead. Uh, you're more apt to use something if it's already pre-cut and ready to go uh, for you for the week. So make it convenient. Um, just do that little bit of prep work and I promise you will eat healthier if you prep that food um, ahead of time for the week. And one final uh, tip um, and this is just kind of uh, something that I thought that I needed to hit on is to take small steps. If you're wanting to start eating healthier and you're not sure um, or you feel like it's overwhelming, take small steps. Um, don't just try to make a meal plan that is 100% healthy or that is like a salad every single day. Um, you're not going to enjoy that. And so if you just say, you know what, I'm going to eat two salads this week and I'm going to try making a small thing of greens or I'm going to try cooking beans from dried beans if you've never tried that. It's not that hard, especially if you have a power cooker. Um, try new things, but don't overwhelm yourself with trying new things because I know that it can get a little overwhelming because I've done that to myself. Um, so just try new things, but take small steps. Um, and every step forward you take, uh, even if it's a small one, you'll gain momentum over time and you'll eat healthier over time. Also, I wanted to mention how you can train your taste buds. And I'll hit on this briefly. If you want more information, maybe I can make a video about it but basically you need to train your taste buds if you want to eat healthier a lot of times we've gotten so accustomed to um, uh, junk food or food that's not so healthy that we don't really crave or want the healthier foods and so if you train your taste buds um, then you can uh, incorporate foods that maybe you just do not even like right now so for example I used to hate uh, walnuts. So if you would ask me three, four months ago, let's say, if I would sit down and eat walnuts, I would have said, no way. Um, I wouldn't even eat them when they were covered in sugar. Um, my grandma would make a lemon tort for um, birthday parties and I would not eat it. Had had walnuts uh, in the crust and then she would sometimes sprinkle them on top. And I just wouldn't eat it because I did not like the taste. I didn't like anything, the texture, nothing about a walnut. Um, but over the last couple months, I was determined to train my taste buds because I've done it in the past and I did. And now I can honestly say that I really enjoy eating uh, my walnuts with my fruit bowl in the morning because that's what I've been eating. And so that would be something that I would suggest is uh, if you're wanting to eat healthier, 
to train your taste buds and um, you will eventually really like those foods. Um, and it might take a little time. It might not be a two month thing for you, but over time you'll learn to like food. It's kind of like the acquired taste. Um, people say, oh, that's an acquired taste. Um, but you can actually train your taste buds to like things. Um, so I dare you to try it. I want to say thank you for everyone who has stuck around this long. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate each and one, every one of you. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for future videos, and I'll see you next time.